going on foundry groups as we dive in today one of the things i want to do is talk to you about ezekiel for a minute you know the best there is a rock uh song that best describes the book of ezekiel if you have um your phone and you've downloaded journey's greatest hits you will uh find a song in there called the wheel in the sky keeps on turning it's just perfect. When you think of the imagery of Ezekiel and all the crazy things going on in that giant wheel in the sky and, you know, birds with eyes all over them and eyes under their wings, but a lion's head and all these different things, you think, what is going on? But here's the thing. There's imagery that points to God's work, God's glory, and God's purposes in this. So as we look at some of the imagery this week and talk about it, what I would like you to do in these discussions is, if you have questions, be at peace maybe not being able to resolve them all. Maybe there is some mystery, not maybe, there is some mystery hidden in Scripture that we don't catch. It's too deep, it's too wide for us, and sometimes we sit back in awe and go, what did he see if that's how he described it. Because I don't know about you, but there's been times I've tried to describe something to my wife or to my kids, and I'm like, that's such a terrible description. I wonder if Ezekiel felt that way when he got done describing the bird all covered in eyeballs. And, you know, like, oh, no, that was in Revelation. The bird all covered in eyeballs with, you know, eyeballs under its wings and, and doing all these things and crying, holy, holy, holy. Like, there is a time and a place where we are limited And God is set free to do the work. He's doing, revealing to us who are so limited, something of his glory. And we find ourselves absolutely tongue-tied, absolutely lacking in inspiration to describe it. Not because we're bad, but because he's so much more than we could ever encapsulate. The imagery in Ezekiel is high. It is lifted up, and it's one of those beautiful things. As we get ready for kids' questions, here's what we're going to do. There is about three large paragraphs that I would like to have you, the parents or the facilitator, read to the kids. And once you read that, we're going to come back to question number one. Take a minute, read those, and then we'll be back with question one. All right, question number one. Kids, do you believe in Jesus or do you believe on Jesus? That's an interesting question. I like that. Um, in a weird way, it's a weird way to word it, but think about a different image. Believing a chair is strong enough to hold you is believing in it, but actually sitting in the chair is believing on it. Talk about that. Question number two, how can you live that out and show the people around you that Jesus is worth believing in, even if there's things about him that they don't understand? Thanks for believing on a chair and sitting with us, kids. We hope you had a good time in groups answering questions. Yeah, no. It's a terrible song, Matt. All right, have a great time, kids. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week in groups. Question number one for the adults. Have you ever experienced a prophecy that seemed to be an announcement of a punishment or, on the other side, maybe a promise of comfort? If you have, go ahead and take some time. Share with your group what was that, uh, what it was, what was it was about. All right, question number two. Uh, what areas or images in the Bible seem strange to you? Hint, check out Ezekiel 36, 24 to 27. Read that. I promise you'll have a new place to say, that's an image that seems strange to me. All right, question number three. What kind of idols do you have in your life? Oh, man, that's going to be awkward to answer in groups. Enjoy.
Question number four is a bit rhetorical, but I'm asking it anyway because we go into a following answer, a following question that is uh, that's going to be tougher to answer. So uh, the the rhetorical question, which uh, just a little footnote, the answer is yes. Um, are are the idols that you have in your life distracting you from a deeper relationship with Jesus? Yes, they are. So that's true. So why don't we bounce to this? What can you do? How can you participate with God in the sanctification process as he fills you with his spirit and transforms you into the image of Jesus? What's your participatory role in being remade in the image of Christ? And how do you allow God to remove and cleanse you from those impurities, the things the idols bring into your life? Talk about it as a group. Well, hey, guys, thank you for joining us in groups this week. We don't have a group vine for next, so all I'm going to do is throw a pin at a camera. Hopefully it hits it, and Kyle has to buy a new one. Oh, I missed. Blocked it. But it was off to the side. Blocked it. Mini Narto ran out of here. Nerd, nerd. All right. Have a great day, guys. Sorry we called Kyle names.